on this episode of Moments with Merv. Whoop, whoop. Coming to a closer. Whoop, whoop. So, we're basically just going to recap what the big takeaways from this whole season we even talked about that you should understand. So, we talked about relationships. Yes. We talked about friendships. We talked about the men, the women, the friends that you should avoid, the ones you want in your life. We talked about what makes a great spouse and what makes a great friend and what they also should embody. And we also talked about online dating that umbrellas, uh, long distance relationships and things of that nature. So we covered quite a bit. Now, what are the things that we should pay attention to and should have taken away. Well, let's start from the friends category. So for starters, we only want good vibes only. I said only twice, I probably shouldn't have, but guess what, you heard it. That was the emphasis. We only want good vibes. And this time period in our, we say in this day and age, like we don't need any issues. A lot of us are having some of our own problems as it is that is an unneeded unnecessary uh stressor you could say because again like some of us that's in college if you haven't been in college then you don't understand the struggle but for those of us who don't work you know 40 hours a week and we got a commanding boss we don't know that struggle and for those of us who go to school and try to work 40 hours a week we don't need that so the last thing that we need is a person who's not going to help us you know, feel relief, like feel a little better. So again, good vibes. If they're not going to be good, get rid of them. Simple, 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 simple. Also, don't forget that these are my opinions. So it doesn't reflect, <laughs> but take it how you want it. Say it like that. So um, also, you also know that friends, we do compete. We compete to make each other better. That's how, honestly, you can measure yourself but that's how you keep leveling up like when your friend is doing something great something you know is really accomplishing a goal and you go okay oh i see you i see you let me try to go ahead and do that as well you know you're you're trying to do a little better but you're trying to make that person go better as well so y'all y'all are basically kind of like what you want to say you can kind of say you're our teammates we are both our battle positioning but at the end of the day you're not reaching the same goal that's the type of friend you want a person who's going to compete with you to make you better not one who's trying to one up you to look better than you because now they're trying to be raw if you don't know what that means they're trying to stunt on you if you don't know what that means it means that they're trying to look better than you publicly and make it seem as if you are not on their level and that you cannot compete with them and you're not trying to compete with them you're trying to live your life and do the best that you can at the end of the day we compete with ourselves and try to make ourselves better than the previous day remember that if that person trying to one up you they are not your friend. Sounds good? Cool, cool. Also, now, in our teens, our 18s, our 20s, our 30s, our 40s, our 50s, I'm not going to lie to you, um, the time now does not mean that much. And what I mean by that is the amount of time that you had with a friend, it, is, it doesn't matter as much. And again, this is my opinion. But it's true. Some of us try to hang on to these relationships or these friendships. I mean, let's just say the same thing. Same thing. But we try to hang on to these these bonds and it's not there. And the thing is, we try to relate that to, oh, well, we've been friends for years, friends for X amount of time period. And it doesn't matter. Because remember, like, time is just the length, okay? But the bond is the strength. That is what you're measuring as time goes over. <clears throat> because again, I've met friends who I've got an instant connection with, and even though we're like, we're friends for years now, but like instant connection within like the first two months, something stronger than what I've had with friends that I've known for 10 years. Isn't that crazy? But you would think that me and that person who's known each other for 10 years will have a bond that's so much stronger. No, we have time that's so much longer. And that's where some of us get confused, where we try to put like, Oh, because you've known this person for X amount of time period that they deserve a sense of hierarchy. And it's no, it's like, how does that person actually make you feel? 
you might have just met some two, somebody two days ago and just kind of like, oh my goodness, you're, you know, you're kind of cool. Like, let's see where this goes. And y'all are really, y'all, y'all hitting it off. And it's months down the later, you know, a bunch of months down, <laughs> a bunch of months later. Now it's a year later, and you're kind of like, okay, well, this person that I've known for a year is doing way better than this person that I've known for ten years. So even though I've known them longer, but the bond that I have with this person is stronger. That's who you. That's who you really, you know, get closer to. Because again, like some people would be like, oh my goodness, we started from the sandboxes. Well, it's like, okay, well, go play in the sand then. Like, obviously you're still being a child. And now you see why that y'all haven't, you know, elevated to nothing better. Why you see that y'all are still kind of having those those childish issues. Because in, the, in y'all mindset, well, we start from the sandboxes in the way that we were then is how we're going to be now. And as some of us have seen, that doesn't work. And then some of us be like, oh my gosh, man, we go way back. Like back when we was matching $5. Listen, listen. Okay, matching $5 back then is nothing now. Okay, <laughs> we have all moved on to better and bigger things. And I never matched $5 because I was broke. <laughs> the only person I matched $5 with was the Sunoco. Like when I tell you, I used to go and get me some Arizonas or a Brisk and some hot chips every morning before school <laughs> all, all it took was a dollar a, t- a dollar or two and i had everything i needed for to get me to lunch and then when i go to lunch i'll go meet a friend or i'll go mooch off of them because you know i, I was that guy i was i was enjoyable because i like that but <laughs> the whole point is um again you you're looking for the strength not the length okay because the stronger you are with someone, the honestly, the better results that you can have with people. Because I don't know if some of y'all have noticed, but the people that you tend to want to be around because that bond is stronger, y'all can honestly relate to a certain uh, degree. But that degree is pretty high. Like, let's just say, you know, you're the, the person that you've known longer. Like, y'all used to talking about, you know... How y'all grew up, you know, high school and middle school and, you know, trading Pokemon cards or whatever y'all do. Like, y'all got all that. But the person that you're stronger with, y'all are talking about goals. You know, y'all are talking about the next car y'all trying to get in the most strategic way. Y'all are talking about how you want to move and how you're going to move and type of jobs. Like, those are things that you care about now. Like, yes, the person that you are you had longer time with Y'all can relate to some funny stuff, but it's like your mind has shifted a little bit to the person who's stronger because y'all, you're talking to something, y'all talking about something that you actually care about, that you can get into. And now you're like, okay, so you're really my friend. They're my friend too, but you're what I want to be around. That is something that you really got to pay attention to. And overall, you got to evaluate your friends. Now, I'm not saying hand out scorecards, even though that's something petty I would do. But the thing is, I can do that because I am me. (laughs) And if you honestly ask any of my friends, like when I do something goofy, like I remember back in, I think it was freshman year, where I brought my blender to the cafeteria because I didn't have any fruit, I didn't have any yogurt, I had my protein powder, I didn't have any ice. So I had nothing. I didn't have any juice. I didn't go grocery shopping that week. So I'm like, darn, I just left the gym. I want a smoothie. You know what? I'm going to bring my blender. So I put the powder in the blender and I took everything in my bag and went to the calf and, you know, made me a nice smoothie. I made a few Instagrams. I didn't expect to get recorded. But I guess when you hear, when you hear it's like a little motorcycle in the, in the cafeteria, it brings some eyes. But again, you know who you are, so you can do like little weird stuff if you can But I'm not saying you got to hand out scorecards, but what you want to do is literally just think about who you're around and think about how they actually make you feel and what value they bring to you. And when you do that, honestly, for one, you want to look at all uh, your friends, but starters, you got to look at the person individual. So let's just say out of 10, you know, this friend gets a six, this other friend gets a 10, another friend gets an eight, another friend gets a two. Now you see that your, your numbers are kind of like all over the place. And honestly, where you want to aim for is about 80%. So that's where you kind of look at the whole group. So with the 2 and the 6 and the 8 and the 10, you we can honestly see that the number 2 is kind of skewing your numbers. If you get rid of them, now you got 6, 8, and 10. And just for some math for you guys, you know, 6 plus 8 is 14, plus 10 is 24, Divided by 3 gives you 8, and if it's out of 10, then you got 8 out of 10, which is 80%. Bam. 
Now you see who to eliminate and why that should raise your, your scorecard, basically. What you want to do is really get rid of the people who aren't really helpful. So, again, that person who got a number of two, like, you might be trying to hang on to them because, again, you knew them longer. But at this point, they're not really doing anything to help benefit you. So, you got to release them. Release, 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 and release. So, one thing you want to do is keep them to a good standard and not the high school standard, you know? Like, oh my gosh, man, that's my that's my dude, man, that's my girl, man. They they bring me Chipotle when I'm hungry. That's my ROD. Like, first of all, okay, <laughs> just because somebody brings you food, okay, an over, uh, overstuffed bowl, if they ask, because if it's not this under, but listen, I don't eat Chipotle, but I'm telling y'all how I see it. Just because somebody brings you food does not correlate them to be your ROD. They're not your ride or die. You just feel that way because they did something positive probably for once and now you want to credit them back with a hierarchy especially again if you knew it for a long time no if you have your standards where it's like okay this person needs to be doing this with their life this person needs to be aiming for this for their life maybe this person isn't in a job right now maybe they aren't in school but are they ambitious and trying to do what they need to do to get onto their track that's how you really evaluate now everybody again has their own individual goals individual uh, wants you can say but make sure it's not no no high school stuff like oh my goodness they let me borrow this sweater they're my best friend forever no we're not on that no more you need to have higher standards for yourself so you can hold them to a higher account and at the end of the day sometimes you got to let them go they got to go bye bye and i'm not talking about the bye bye where you don't text them for real but y'all dm each other every day replying off of stories no Sometimes you have to let go and not so much start over, but in a, in a sense, you will see yourself getting new friends and they'll kind of fade away. And you know what that's called? That is called life. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. So that's that part to it. <laughs> so from a relationship standpoint, if you see the characteristics and that was mentioned earlier in the season, no matter if it was a narcissist, if they're controlling, if they're not supportive, if they're kind of a bully, if they're very flirty, if they have any of the characteristics that we mentioned that you should avoid, then you got two options. If you see this in your individual, you got two options. The first option is address the situation. The second option is to leave. The difference between them is, of course, the steps. So addressing means that you don't wait you know okay and leaving means that you don't waste okay so let me say it again addressing means you don't wait leaving means you don't waste so what i mean by both of those when you address the situation you're going to go ahead and you know talk about the issues you're gonna talk about the problems <clears throat> and uh your relationship you want to go ahead and do this early but you want to do it before you get crazy. So, you want to address the situation before you bleach anything. Before you bleach anything, okay? You want to address it before you crease his sneakers, okay? Jordans aren't cheap. We're going to stop normalizing that. That is not okay, okay? That is not funny. I haven't had the issue, but I can imagine because my feelings will be hurt. I get mad when I crease my own shoes. So, I know if somebody else do it. It's just like, are you serious, okay? Also, we're going to address the situation before we call animal control because there's a dead cat on the floor. And that dead cat is probably her wig or wigs because you know how women love to leave their wigs on the floor, hanging up, over the sink. It's scary, okay? Oh, my gosh. And we're going to make sure that <laughs> we address the situation before we take all the tires off her car, okay? We're going to make sure that we handle things as mature adults. This is the part where you address. You're really going to have mature conversations. You're going to talk about what you want. You're going to talk about what you actually plan to have in you all's future. And that's a big thing because you want to see eye to eye as early as possible <clears throat> or at least get an understanding of what your goals are. And this is why you address the situation because again, some of us, we let things fester. We have all this build up in our head and we go talk to friends and stuff. We're talking to the people who have nothing to do with our relationship. But 
we will hold it in and compact it with the person that we do have a problem with and not say it. Why? Because sometimes we are scared. Should we be scared? No. Why? Because they're an individual who does the same thing that you do. They can bleed how you do. They might have, not have feelings how you do, but they have feelings somewhere in, in their, somewhere in that ball, okay? But the whole idea is talk to this person. Try to get an understanding. Meet the ground, you know? Do it early. Don't wait. And then if you address it and y'all can see that things aren't going to be eye to eye, then you leave. Then you go, okay, deuce. That's when you just really chuck the deuces and you just move on. There should be no hard feelings. Y'all had a mature conversation. There should not have been any screaming, any yelling, any cussing, any biting, any fighting. None of that. Mature conversation. Y'all are adults. We all are adults. And all you want to do is get to the bottom. Basically try to figure out where <clears throat> the... We can say where, where y'all are trying to head and how is I going to, how you're going to get there. And if y'all don't want to go the same path, then you go ahead and walk away. Also, remember, our partners... Our spouses are one of the biggest expenses that we have, okay? Especially in the millennial and Generation Z factor. We all try to keep up with the Joneses. Not, not, I, not I, though, okay? Y'all y'all be safe. Not me. But a lot of us try to keep up, you know, with the social media trends and buying all these things. Listen, money doesn't buy happiness, okay? I heard that. However... You're more happy when you got more money, okay? You're happier with more money. And the thing is, money does break, buy opportunities. And that's something I believe in. So it doesn't buy happiness, but it buys opportunities for happiness. And when you got more money, you can be more happier. Remember that, okay? Now, again, our partners are expensive. So you need to pay attention. Because the thing is, look, if she spends, you know, Louis V money, but you only make FUBU money, okay? Uh, you, you see that's not going to work. You got to go to her. And you say, hey, I don't make what you're spending. We need to find a middle ground. We got, there's an issue here and we need to dissolve that. <laughs> like ASAP, no Rocky, okay? Also, if you, you know, bringing in banks of money, like you're bringing in a lot of money, a lot of bread, and she's bringing a bag, okay? For you to put your money in her bag so she can go spend it. Then you go to her and say, hey, no. No, 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 no. You let her know that what she's doing is unacceptable. And if she's not going to bring anything to the table, then guess what? You're not going to put anything on the table because that's not how we work. We do things very equal here, okay? Also, if you're, you know, individual and you work hard, okay? And I'm talking about from the female standpoint, so like the, since I did the guys. If you work hard for your money and you grind and the thing is, he go spends money on dumb stuff like, you know, blockbuster stocks. <laughs> or he goes spends money to go get your car fixed because his car is still on Facebook Marketplace. Meaning he doesn't have one, but he done messed up your car or he didn't took all the gas out of it because he had been driving it everywhere. And now he need money from you to go put it back into your car. Then guess what? You see, he's obviously an issue. He's obviously a problem. Don't let that person be a bar, a burden. There we go. I was a bargain, a burden. Remember, we're gonna make smart decisions, smart choices. That's how we're rocking. That's how we're coming. See, it's, because the thing is, a lot of us have these aspirations when it comes to money. Like, oh yeah, I'm gonna spend it here. I wanna go do this. This is my plan. And we all know how we feel when somebody who honestly has nothing to do with our money either takes it or, you know, help burns it in a sense of where they're spending it, where they're not supposed to, or it costs you, the individual, and it costs them nothing. That is the most irritating thing that we go through. And that's just like, that's true facts. Because the very simple fact is, it's like, now you're kind of, you know, you're hindering me. You're, you're, you're costing me my joy. And what is it going to cost me for you to leave, in a sense. It's basically like, can I pay you to walk out my life? And I, <laughs> no cap, I did, I would dead serious ask somebody that. Like, hey, can I give you like $500 to break up with me and just drive off? I don't I don't care where you go. Um, you can go back to the mall, you can go blow it all, you can call an Uber, just can I give you some money to please leave me alone? Cause you're costing me thousands of dollars and I don't appreciate that. Like, 
again, our partners are expensive, and you should know early on how they are. Because again, if you know you don't make the type of money that she spends, don't really try to involve yourself with her because you're not going to win at the end of the day. And you just might make the Instagram story, which means that you just may be clowned. You don't want to be a clown because not all females cover the name or the picture. They will leave everything up and now everyone knows that follows her that you are a clown. Okay? Remember that. Also, if you are a female who cannot offer something back in return, he might be the breadwinner and you might be the bread eater. Do not be that person. If you can't offer a value, please don't hurt, hurt this man. Because especially if he's one that has done a lot and has been through a lot to get to where he's at. Don't be that person, okay? Don't be the issue. Also, 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 don't let <clears throat> a friend enter a relationship, okay? Do not let somebody enter the relationship if they did not successfully leave a friendship or exit the friendship. I say it like that. And what that means is a lot of us, in a sense, we pick our first or our next relationships based on our friends. And the thing is, some of us settle. We do not settle. The thing is, like, when you let somebody come from a friend to your spouse and you weren't confident in that, you know what you're doing? You're gambling. We are not gamblers. If you want to go gamble, go to Vegas, okay? When, <clears throat> if, if, when you're evaluating someone, which, again, it starts from the friendship standpoint, you can get an idea of who they are, what they're doing, what their attentions are. If... You kind of like them, but you see you the word kind of means you're kind of iffy about it. Do not let this person enter the relationship standpoint because now you're adding a lot of real real ties. Like now you you are putting this person on a higher standpoint, so now you're expecting something. And you're doing yourself a disjustice or injustice, whatever word that is. You know what I'm saying? The whole idea is now you're giving this person, you know, more responsibility, giving them more expectations. And the thing is, you knew who they were before you got into a relationship with them because they were your friend. And again, if you were kind of like, um, well, I, I, I kind of like them. They're, they're cool. I, I'm unsure, but yeah, I should, I should go ahead. Don't feel pressured. Okay, you take your time. Things like this take time. Relationships are investments. We don't like to waste our time. And in a sense, we don't like to waste our money, and we don't like to waste opportunities. So, if you're unsure about them in the friend standpoint, do not bring them to a relationship standpoint. Because you are going to be the one that's sad, the one that's upset, and we don't want to be upset. Right? Cool. So, just pay attention to how they're changing. And, the way you do this, when you're leaving, when you're moving on, you're just going to say, I'm gone. Okay? G-O-N-E means we're getting over negative energies. I'm gone. I'm getting over negative energies. If this person is obviously not give you the vibe that you want, then you're gone. It's so it's so simple, guys. It's so simple. And we love our acronyms. And the thing is, I just came with that up today. Okay, don't try to steal it. That's trademarked by Sir Murph. Thank you. But the whole idea is we got to get past these things. Like, we encounter people who aren't beneficial to us, and we have to accept that as individuals and as people. We make mistakes. That's just what humans do. If we didn't make mistakes, then what would we be? Maybe robots? I don't know. Because robots are made by humans who mess up some robots. That's why they got to go back to the, produ the production line and get fixed. So if we were perfect, then guess what? We I don't know where we'd be. We probably still wouldn't be existing because people do too much. So the thing is, when it's time to move on, you have to get that in your mental. Where it's like, okay, I took a loss. But I never took a loss. I took a learning experience. So that's where I look at things from an L standpoint. You got a loss or you got to learn. And for me, I like to learn. I don't like to lose. I'll learn before I lose, okay? Because, like, once you get into that loss man's mentality, they're kind of like, oh, my goodness, how, what can I do? Oh, now I'm scared for the next thing. And you don't want to put fear in yourself. You want to feel confident where it's like, okay, oh, my goodness, he took my car and he took my wigs. Goodness, oh, my goodness, she took me, she kicked me out of my house. Oh my gosh, she never cut the grass. She shouldn't cut the grass, okay? I'm just saying that. But, you know, just for, just for examples, it's like, okay, where did she go wrong? Where did I go wrong? Where did I overlook? Okay, I need to make sure that doesn't happen again. And the way I start is I got to just leave that situation alone, you know? 
I'm gone. Because you're moving on. You're going on to the uh, something better. Something's going to more be more beneficial. Okay? So one thing some of y'all need to stop doing is looking for, you know, these... Sometimes you find a diamond in the rough, but it's kind of hard. Like, <clears throat> you can find something good, but it's going to be some issues. Like, remember that. One thing you don't want to do is, in, in a sense, listen, listen to this. Don't look for your BMW, your Mercedes Benz, your Audi at a Toyota dealership. Don't let that go over your head, okay? Don't try to look for these high, you know, specialty and just extravagant people in crap neighborhoods. Now, again, you might find this person in the, in, in the rough. You might find them. But then again, you might find them in the rough with issues. That does occur because, again, sometimes they don't know more than what they've been around. So you try to find your BMW at a Toyota dealership. Guess what? That Toyota dealer don't know nothing about that German car. You want to know why? Because those cars are made in two different countries, and usually people who are selling them know nothing about them. Just stay on that because that is a fact. Cool. Now, <laughs> last part, online dating because we got into this, and that was super quick. Again, if you symbolize celebrities as you know your goals, as your dreams, then to me... Honestly, you're destined to have a shamble relationship. Now, I'm not saying that's really going to happen, but to me, like, if you're looking at somebody else in a relationship as your goals and you know nothing about what's going on with them and what happened or what's going on behind the scenes besides what you see on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, wherever y'all get y'all social media from, um, you, you got an issue. You shouldn't really put somebody else's relationship as your goals. Now, 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 now. I ain't gonna cap to you, no lie. The only relationship, they're not my goals though, but the only relationship that I love and I enjoy is David and Tamela Man. If those two, okay, if they somehow don't work out, then to me, relationships are done, they're dead, okay? <laughs> like, oh my gosh, they're, they're just a, a, a great, amazing couple. Like, started way back, talking about high school type, and look where they are now, you know, they're on TV, you know, they didn't, got uh better and better shape you know worked on their physical <clears throat> like and they're, they're they're a strong um you know religious couple couple so they got the strong faith and that's what's kind of like uplifting because they're they have like multiple areas that they're in it's just kind of amazing but again um don't let that symbolize now i'm not saying there i symbolize let them symbolize what i want because again i don't know how you know things are behind the scenes also i am you know i do have the you can't really talk about that part but I have the faith that they have, but it might not be as strong, you know, in some areas as theirs is, especially with some of our other partners. Because some of us aren't as, you know, christian -y as y'all y'all act. And we're just going to state that. But the whole idea is don't let other people that you don't know about be your goals. Because when these people, you know, break up and fall apart, and y'all kind of y'all kind of like, like hurt. You're like, oh, my gosh. What? <sighs> What, what does that mean for me? What 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 am I going to do? Like, don't let them symbolize that. You know what I mean? And again, everybody doesn't need to know about your relationship, okay? You don't have to post everything. Y'all wonder why people slide into your DMs because people know when she acting up or when he acting up and that's the perfect time for somebody else to try to slide in and be like, hey, man, you know, let me take you on a date or, hey, let me be the woman that you need, you know, yada, yada, yada. Like, people know these things and they're going to try to take those opportunities because you post everything. Because you post everything, they're going to try to shoot their shot and do what they can to, you know, be your spouse now. And now you got either multiple spouses or now you just got an issue because you post everything. So everybody knows everything. This is why I don't, I don't, I don't really engage in that. Like, I ain't going to cap to y'all. I will probably be in a relationship for about two years, two to three, honestly, before anybody knows who my spouse is. Y'all probably will just see her post it with an uh, engagement ring. I think I'm going to rock it like that. Just before some fact is, it's like, the more people are involved, the more they can say, the more issues come about. And we don't need to have that. Also, online dating is becoming more popular. So that is okay. Sometimes you, because the thing is, it opens your eyes to people you may not have ever met in your life. I got some great friends that live in Cleveland that I didn't know. I can't tell you the cities because that is being an op, but <clears throat> there's multiple cities in Northeast Ohio that are relatively close to each other, but some parts are Cleveland, some parts are actually not Cleveland, but they're not, again, they're like, they may be like literally the next city over, but I would have never known so where some of these people are and actually could, you know, meet with them 
had I not known or spoken to them, you know, through social media. So it's becoming more popular. Popular. Just utilize it for what its main purpose is, and utilize it in a good, a good manner. Also, do not be as scared to talk to these people in person. So that means people that you talk to for months, weeks, however long y'all spoke through social media, when you get in person, do not be scared. Y'all already have previous, you know, things to talk about or things y'all have spoken about. So you can literally reflect onto that. But now you got to upgrade it and bring some value to the conversation. Honestly, if you can make somebody laugh, you can have a great conversation. That's all you got to do. And just keep them engaged. Whether it's the female talking to the male or the male talking to the female or female and female and male and male. However it goes, just keep them engaged. If you keep them laughing, they're going to be engaged. But also, don't be scared to talk to people that you never spoke to because you're so used to talking online. That's what I've seen has been kind of a, a, a big factor um, with people. Like, they're so used to being behind a screen and they kind of forget how to talk to people in person. Because, like, behind the screen, if you don't, you know, speak, you don't really care. It's just like, oh, okay, well, they didn't DM me back. So I'll just unsend a message and I just won't talk to them. Like, for some of y'all, I don't think y'all should unsend y'all messages because some of y'all talk to everybody or try to talk to everybody. And this, at least, if you if you struck or if you shot and you missed, at least you know who you, you know, talk to. Because if you try to do it again after you unsend the message and now you just kind of look thirsty and she might remember that. And guess who's going to make the Instagram story? You. Yep. So, just remember that. Also, we talk about longest relationships. One thing you want to do with this is make sure you have a plan. See, some of y'all are so, you know, excited and, oh my gosh, I miss this person. I love them. They're just the best thing ever. And you get together <clears throat> and y'all kind of are like stuck. Whereas like, well... Just like that, you just you just, you just kind of you just kind of like um uh so what 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 are we? You're here now. That's cool, but what what are we gonna do now? Um, yeah, that's that's literally that's how the awkwardness is. Cause everything we all long distance, you know, y'all couldn't talk as much because y'all got your own individual things to do. And it's like, oh my gosh, I finally get to talk to you, you know, late at night, and now it's amazing. I finally get to see you in person, and this is amazing. It's been weeks or months, you know, long. But when that person actually moves in. And y'all are together, and now you're kind of like, oh, well, this isn't, huh, this isn't um, as fun as I thought. I mm, almost look like it's time for you to go. Like, that's 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 kind of the feel. Because the thing is, now you just see, like, how they are. Because, like, again, some females, they love, you know, when they finally get to see their spouse after a long period of time. Because, like, I mean, guys feel the same way, but sometimes, you know, we like to be nonchalant. So, just from a female standpoint, like, she can be like, oh, my gosh, you know, she's so excited. You know, she's, she's with you. And then you can ask her, like, you know, what do you want to do? And she's going to be like, oh, my gosh, like, I just want to love you. And you're like, okay, cool. So, like, you know, where are you going to work? And she's kind of like, you know, I haven't thought about that. And you're kind of like, oh, okay. Um, are you going to work? And she's like, I don't know. Like, I'm just happy to be with you. I love you. I want to love you. Like, that's all I want to do. And you're kind of like, oh, okay, cool. Well, so when, the, you know, electric bill comes in and we don't pay it, you know, I, I guess I got to send them a message that says, hey, I know that I couldn't send you this $120 check that you were expecting this month, but just know I love you. I want to love you. I want to love my electricity. I want to keep it on. You know what I mean? Like, you can't pay your bills with love. <laughs> like, it's, it's probably somebody out there who's like, oh, my gosh, yes, you can. You can do that. I don't, I don't really care. The whole moral of the story is make sure you have a plan when y'all get together. That's the, that's the big thing. That's the major thing. You want to have a plan when y'all actually come together to be a unit. Because those who break up in that percentage that you should go listen to, and one of the older older ones, that <clears throat> those who break up, I think it's like one in every three, they don't have a plan when they actually get together. And that's that's the big thing. When you don't have a plan, you're kind of in, that, in that, that, that range where you're kind of like stuck. And now it's kind of like, oh, I don't know what to do. Where do we go from here? Like, why do y'all think some of the people who actually meet on Catfish and... They find out they're actually them. You see in the end credits, uh, they had no more communication after the show. They might have spoke for another month, and that was just it. Why? Because they finally got together. After all this talking, they didn't have a plan. It was just like, oh, my gosh, I kind of just wanted to see you. And that was it, right? So when you finally meet this person that you had longest relationship, you know, from, and y'all communicate it, communicate it online, make sure you know what the next step is. And I'm going to leave it at 